The cool thing is that now we can actually use this template, just duplicate it down and change this word to anything else. And it will apply all of the effects very, very quickly uh, with the same texture applied as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this text effect using Adobe Illustrator so that you can apply it to your t-shirt designs or any other project of your choice. So before you get started, you need to set up a few things within Illustrator to make this design process as smooth as possible. First of all, my artboard dimensions are 4000 pixels in width and 3000 pixels in height. If you want to use the exact same dimensions, then you will need a color scheme. So you can find these by Googling retro or vintage color scheme or color palette, and you will find some inspiration that way. You could also use the same one as me and literally just take a screenshot of this pull it into Illustrator and then use the eyedropper tool to sample the colors. I've created these colors as boxes right here because that will help us save these very easily as a swatch group. So these two panels right here is what you should have open as well. We're going to need them quite a bit for the text effect today. So the appearance panel and the swatches panel, in case you don't know where to find them, head up to window and then tick appearance up here and swatches at the bottom. So next up, in order to save this color scheme, just select all of the boxes, then click on this folder symbol down here to create a new color group, give it a name. So I'm going to call this retro and then click OK to get these saved into here for easy access. And then you can also delete the boxes because we don't need them anymore. The font I'm using right here is called Groovy Script. There will be a download link for this font in the description. You can use different fonts for this effect. It will work the same way. However, I would recommend Groovy Script because, well, first of all, it, it looks really amazing, but it also has a wide variety of different glyphs and ligatures, which will make the words look even better and more interesting. So to get started, just select your word, then hit T on your keyboard to select the type tool and highlight individual letters. For most of them, you will see these glyphs coming up at the bottom. You can also click this little arrow symbol to bring up the glyphs window. And as you can see, there's lots of different variations for the T. For example, if we click on this one or double click, I should say, then it's going to add this little swash right here, which looks really, really nice. So let's try this for the G as well. That has various different options that you can play around with and try out. Not all of them are going to look good, but you will find some really, really nice variations. I wouldn't overdo this, like don't do it for every single letter and don't do them too extravagant where you've got loads and loads of swashes everywhere, but with some balance and using them within reason, you can definitely make the word look a lot more interesting. Now it's time to start adding the 3D stroke effect. So make sure your text is selected and then head to the appearance panel where you want to click on the add new stroke button. Now, now we're going to drag this stroke underneath the fill color right here. And we actually need to select a fill color for this. So change this to white, which is going to be the main primary color for our text. And the stroke itself, we're going to change to one of our color swatches. So in my case, I'm going to use the dark blue right here. I would recommend you start off with a dark color as well. And we're going to change the size of the stroke to 50 pixels. If your artboard is in a different size to mine, then you might have to play around right here and have a slightly higher or lower pixel amount. The next step is heading up to effects, distort and transform and transform. Then where it says move right here, change the horizontal and the vertical setting to 10 pixels each and then head down to the copies section and change this to five. And now if we hit OK, as you can see, it is casting a 3D shadow from our main word. The next step is going to be selecting the stroke layer right here. It should be selected already if you haven't clicked out of this. And then clicking on the hamburger menu, then selecting duplicate item. And as you can see, it is now pasted another stroke effect underneath our first one. And we can now quickly go ahead and change the color of this one from the dark blue to the next one in our color swatch panel. So I'm going to use this slightly lighter blue right here, then click on transform once again. Sometimes you might have to click on this arrow to reveal the transform effect again, click on this and then change this from five copies to 10 copies. 
So we want to add another five onto them every single time we create a new stroke. Now we just repeat that process, select the stroke that we just created, head up to the burger menu, click duplicate item, change the color, head into the transform effect and change it from 10 to 15. Hit OK. And as you can see, now it's starting to look really, really nice. So just repeat that until your color swatches are used up. And here we go. Once you're done, all that's left is actually adding a nice little texture effect to this to give it the final vintage sort of worn down look. And in order to do this, just select your word, find the transparency panel over here. Once again, if you can't find it, head up to window and select it from there. So we want to use the transparency panel now to make a mask. Then you want to untick the clip option right here and actually select the mask by clicking on this empty thumbnail. And now you can head up to file and select place and then it will ask you to actually choose a file from your computer or from your device. That's where you want to choose a nice texture file. Once you've found that, it will come up with this weird little symbol right here, but just click on the artboard and drag for it to draw out a box like this. So make sure it covers the entirety of your design and then let go. And now, as you can see, you can move this texture around and it's going to erase the colors of your word, which looks really, really nice. By the way, the texture I'm using right here is from my t-shirt design textures bundle, which will be linked down below in the description, but you can use any other texture of your liking as well for this. Once you're done applying the texture effect, then just make sure to click back into the actual design layer right here to exit out of the mask. This way we can once again edit our design and everything else. The cool thing is that now we can actually use this template, just duplicate it down and change this word to anything else and it will apply all of the effects very, very quickly with the same texture applied as well. If you use Adobe Illustrator on a regular basis, you might not be aware of some hidden tricks and features which could save you a ton of time with your workflow. If you don't want to miss out on these, make sure to check out this video next where I'll go over six different ways to increase your productivity with Adobe Illustrator.